What's going on guys? It is Murder Inc. here back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to be talking about Riho Bone Spear, the brand new Void Legendary for the Shadow King faction in the clan boss. And this is going to be a really cool video. She has so much to offer and it's really easy to miss. So I'm really excited to show you the clan boss team we have today. This video is going to be a continuation of the last video where I just did a champion spotlight. So if you're unfamiliar with her kit, definitely go and check that out first and then come back to this video so you can see her potential in the clan boss. Because I do believe she really does deserve a separate video dedicated strictly for her clan boss because of how powerful she really is. All right, so let's talk about Ultra Nightmare, the champions I used before we start this run. We have Alton, we have Riho Bone Spear, the highlight of this video, Iron Brago, Valkyrie, and finally a Cult Brawler here. So there's a lot of cool synergies to be had on this team. Riho is going to be very strong. So for this setup, we are going to start with the A2 from Alton here. Riho, we're going to start with that A2 ability applying every single debuff in the game. Defense down, weaken, attack down, decrease crit rate, HP burn, everything you can think of. Now, one thing that's going to be really strong, as we can see here, is going to be decreased crit rate. I briefly mentioned it in the last video, but this is really where it's going to shine here. Decreased crit rate on the clan boss, regardless of what difficulty you're actually doing, ensures that you will never get crit as long as that debuff is in fact placed on the boss while it's active. This is very strong for a couple reasons. The first reason is it's a two turn duration so it's going to cover the first and second AOE and the stun cannot be a crit. It's always damage based on the health of your champion. So with that being said, as long as you're landing that decreased crit rate buff, you will never get crit a single time while you have Riho on your team. This is very strong. It makes your runs a lot more consistent. Nobody's dying early due to an unlucky crit. Now there's always that chance that she does get resisted and then you can get crit. However, the odds are much higher and in your favor if you are stacking the proper amount of accuracy based on whatever difficulty you are in fact doing. So the key here is going to be, we're going to use this cleanse on Riho right before the stun as we see here, and then we can hit the auto button. Now, one thing you can do if you wanted to, it might be a little bit risky. You could actually wait until after the stun here. I'm not really sure why you would, but since Riho is going to be the fastest on the team I'm currently showing you here, you could position her to go first every single time, have her cleanse the stun, and then put block debuffs on. Another possibility for you if you wanted to is you can use this champion since it is a three turn cooldown with a two turn duration, positioning Riho on your team, making sure that she's cleansing any debuff from any affinity on your champions, as well as protecting you from the oncoming slam stun debuff that the clan boss is going to put on you. All of these things matched together are going to make her very strong here. And if you wanted to risk it, in theory, you could get rid of an attack down champion. I'm usually not a fan of this because if it does get resisted once, since it's not on her A1 ability, you have a very high chance of getting unlucky with RNG, having it not applied, and your team ultimately wiping from that fact. So you can risk if you want to, like I said, but I do not recommend not bringing an attack down champion on their A1 or pairing her with someone like an Iron Brago, using accuracy on Iron Brago as well as stacking his defense for his passive and just kind of bouncing between the two champions. I believe two champions with a rather short duration of the attack down on a cooldown is going to be fine if you do elect to skip using a champion with the attack down on that A1. So now what I want to do is I do want to go over the gear these champions are using just so you can kind of get some type of idea on what we're working with here. One really cool thing you're going to notice right away is I'm not using any lifesteal gear. So let's go ahead and start with Riho Bone Spear. She's currently wearing 63,302 health, 2,500 attack, 35, just under 3,600 defense, 197 speed, 99 crit rate, 142 crit damage, and 292 accuracy. As far as masteries on their champions, you have your rather typical offense and defense tree mastery for a clan boss build. The next champion we do have here is going to be Alton at 47,700 health, 4,000 defense, also at 197 speed, 101 crit rate, 249 crit damage, and 259 accuracy. Now, one thing I did not mention that I did skip over for Riho is she is the only one on the team not wearing stalwart gear, and she's actually going to be keeping up because I did overstack her with HP and defense. 
Since her base stats are so high and so strong, I was actually able to overcome the fact that I had Star War and everybody, and everyone pretty much died on the same turn, which was really cool to see. So now that we've gone over that, we can see here that Alton is in fact wearing a Star War set and a Speed set. For his masteries, he's also using the typical offense tree and defense tree. The next champion we're going to be talking about is going to be Iron Brackle here. We have 41,600 health. 6200 defense, 195 speed, 111 crit rate, 158 crit damage. He's another champion wearing stalwart gear. He is using a broken set to maximize his crit rate, speed, as well as defense. And as far as mastery goes, he's using the typical mastery set, once again with that offense and defense tree. The next champion we're going to talk about is going to be Valkyrie. She has 47,700 health, 6.8 thousand defense, which is definitely very high, 191 speed because you want her to be the slowest in your team, 107 crit rate, 173 crit damage, and the rest of her stats will not matter. She is also in an immortal set as well as a stalwart set, and her masteries are once again going to be the same as everyone else's. Now finally, the last champion we're going to talk about is going to be a cult brawler. I really like using a cult brawler with this because we do have a reheal using that defense down and weaken, also the HP burn and attack down on top of it, but more importantly the defense down and weaken so I wouldn't need to use Dracomorph because Dracomorph's AI doesn't work very well with someone like a Riho because if Riho gets resisted on the weaken, Dracomorph will still not use his defense down and weaken which really takes away a lot from him as a champion. And the fact that Riho has so many debuffs she's adding to the clan boss itself, Dracomorph can definitely be risky and this this is also a very important point to make if you want to use someone like a frozen banshee as well you can over cap your debuffs very quickly and kind of push out that attack down buff so i highly recommend if you're using this champion in a clan boss team really think about these things first because over capping debuffs is a common reason and mistake players make that really hurts them in their clan boss progression so as far as the occult brother stats we have 47,000 health 3.3 3,000 defense, 196 speed, 2,700 attack, 105 crit rate, 202 crit damage, and finally, 243 accuracy. He is also wearing a stalwart gear set, and his masteries are once again going to be the same with the offense and defense tree. So now that we've seen this, let's take a look at this run, watch this damage ramp up. This is a void key for the Ultra Nightmare. It's really fun to watch. Every time Riho puts on all of those debuffs, it's really cool. Could they have added a poison? Yes. Would it have been a bit too broken? In my opinion, I think it would have been. The HP burn is definitely going to be fine overall. So let's go ahead, check back in when we do get to the end of this run and go over the final damage recap. Alright guys, so here we are at the end of the video. There's one really cool thing that I did want to show you. As mentioned, none of these champions are wearing lifesteal, so Alton just took a huge hit of damage. We have no way to heal him back up. This is where Riho Bone Spear really comes in handy for the clan boss here. Valkyrie is going to provide this huge shield protecting, so that's a huge reason why you don't need lifesteal. However, if you simply don't run lifesteal in just Valkyrie, you're going to die very, very early. The key here that Riho adds is going to be the next turn, I believe, for her, where she adds that massive heal and block debuff to the team topping alton off which is going to be the key here she actually did get crit there was no decreased crit rate so she almost died but this is going to be the big heal here that i do want to focus on as we just saw there alton was completely topped off unfortunately riho wasn't topped off so she's probably going to take this stun here yes she is that's going to one shot her this is going to be the end of the run all right guys so there we have it 48.62 million damage dealt on Ultra Nightmare on Void Affinity. This will work for all affinities like I mentioned before. You can simply place Rio's cooldown so she's cleansing any debuff that's applied to you in the second AoE and it also covers that slam. So for Alton we have 9.5 million damage, Iron Bragwell doing 10.9, Riho doing 6 million damage overall with a lot of help from that HP burn, Valkyrie at 7.8 and finally a cult brawler doing the majority of the damage at 14 million damage. This is a really cool team, this is not a 2 to 1 ratio team, this is a straight 
defensive build team one to one ratio no crazy speeds like we saw 191 to 197 speed so definitely very achievable for a lot of people this is going to be a really easy four key if you're progressing regardless of the champions you're using it's going to be a really easy three key if you have quality gear and an easy two key if you have insane gear and much better champions you can definitely swap a cult prowler out you can swap alton out put in two more legendaries and it's actually possible to one key with this team all right guys that is going to conclude my video today on reho bone spear in the clan boss let me know what you think i think she's going to be an amazing asset for the clan boss between her healing between all of the debuffs she applies she's a fantastic void and i believe all void champions should have a kit this strong because this is really the essence of a void champion in my opinion as always guys if you enjoyed this content don't forget to like this video comment subscribe turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my next video and i will see you all in the next upload